Good day everyone. Today we're gonna go through our 80 series Land Cruiser, what we're going around Australia in. Um, it's nothing too special, but we thought it would um, show you around and um, give you an idea of our camping setup and what I've done to the car and what I've broke and what you should do if you do get one of these cars, I guess. But um, yeah, we're just gonna show you around and um, yeah, hope you enjoy it. It's just a bit of a car tour. So let's get into it. We're just gonna start with the front end of the car. So all the exterior and under the engine bay. And then we'll just slowly make our way around to the back to the camping setup and show you where we sleep to. All right, so this is a bull bar. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually just a standard bar what came with the 80. I've just painted it black. Um, it's got these two recovery points what are actually plated to the chassis. So it's not actually to the bull bar, so they're pretty sturdy. These guys here no longer are making bars, I don't think. Just got um, scrub rails and just a side step here. It's really heavy, super heavy, but it's pretty tough. Could, this could be overkill for what we're doing, but I just got it anyway. A little bit extra weight, but Hopefully it protects the car, I guess. I'm um, just sticking with the bull bar, the accessories of it. This is just a uni den. I think it's a three point DBI or something like that. Um, it's good, it does a pretty good whip throughout the front. It's like better in hilly terrain, but um, we only use this when we're teeing up with someone like for a beach run or I don't really use it too much. But um, yeah, that's there. And then this one's kind of cool because we're YouTubing. Um, this is the Cell Fire Go. Pretty expensive unit, but it works. I'll tell you that much. Like you have no reception and this will boost it to like either like 4G or like pretty good. So like I can fire up the lackey and do a bit of work. If you want to spend the money, I think it's like $800, $900, it will work for you. But if you don't want to spend the money, I guess you probably don't really need it. Like people go camping to get away from their phones, I guess. But just a standard snorkel, air tech, came with the car. I didn't want to get a Stano snorkel, so I just kept it. It looks all right, does the job, I guess. These are clear view mirrors. We were going to tow a jet ski, so I thought we'd get some, but we're not doing that now, but they like extend out. Big elephant ears, really. Um, I've actually ran into two walls with them, so they're, I guess they're pretty strong, but they're just a bit bulky. If you had like a ones that were a little bit slimmer, I think it would work better. I just keep hitting stuff with them. <laughs> it's just my bad driving. This light bar here, I don't really do like there's not a lot of like lights on this car. We don't really do a lot of night driving, but it's just a 22 inch steady light bar. It's good for what it is, I guess. It's nothing. I'm sure there's, you get more light and like spotties and stuff will probably be a bit better, but that's it's fine for what we're, what we're doing. We'll fucking polish that up, eh? So that's the front, all bar work and accessories. I'll show you the back bar when we get around there, so. Give you a quick look under the engine bay. It's got gas struts, but mine don't really work. So we just cut a bit of PVC pipe and it just, just kind of holds it there. So this is a 1HDT. So the factory turbo um, 1HZ block, I guess. Yeah, I'll give you a quick look around. There's not a whole lot of stuff done under here. I was going to get a front mount or a top mount, but I kept breaking other things, so I didn't have the money to do that. But this is an aftermarket um, radiator. It's a lot bigger than your factory one, so that's, um, I think it's a ad rad. That keeps it pretty cool. If you, I've got a couple of just stiff breathers up the top there. Nothing too fancy. The wiring's pretty neat now. <laughs> As neat as we could get it anyway. Um, the guys at Sun Coast Marine, I think, helped us out. They put like this um, fuse block in, 
and just gave it a good tidy up, which is pretty cool. So this is my crank battery here, and that's just a um, deep cycle auxiliary battery. I've got a button in there. What I press that button, and it pairs these two batteries together. So say if you're like playing your tunes all night in the car or something, and you, for some reason your crank battery goes flat, I can press a button in the cab and it'll pair them together and I can like jump start my car, like, so my car will start. So I've done that actually a few times, which is um, pretty handy, so, oh, I've got a hair in my mouth. There's not really too much else in here. I've done, I replaced the tappet covers and a few things like that, but it's relatively stock. I guess under here there's nothing outrageous. There's, I know these can make a bit of power, but for what we're doing, I think it's fine. Um, maybe when I get home, I might tickle off. I'm not sure yet. For now, it's, it's sweet. I've got my BCDC Red Arc charger um, in the front here. I didn't have enough room out the back where I wanted to put it, so I just put it here. They say these units like a little bit of airflow, so I guess it's not a, it's an all right spot to put it, but probably would be better to put it closer to your um, house battery, just because there's um, less voltage drop, but um, I just beat the um, cable out, so I think it's like eight, eight mil or something, so. Um, yeah, if you do want to put it there, you can, but most people just put it pretty close to their um, house battery. So I've got another um, lithium battery in the back, but um, just does my fridge and a few lights. I'll just quickly run you through while we've got the hood open, the 12 volt, what's going on here. I've got this fuse block here. This one does my light bar. This one used to do like, there's all this, um, like, I don't know what you call it, like, rust prevention electronic crap thing, what goes to the chassis. That's that, but I don't think it really works anymore. Um, this 15 amp here is the Cellfire Go, I'm pretty sure. Well, I should know that. So this is the Red Arc um, isolator. Yeah. Um, and then I've got my BCDC charger. And then this battery here does my air compressor and I've got a um, water pump at the back in my jerry cans. I'll show you that when we get to the rear setup. Quickly show you where I put my air compressor. Um, it's just here, just plated under this piece of ply. I thought it was not a bad spot to put it. I didn't really have much room at the back and um, apparently they like a bit of airflow if you're not using a tank, so it saves it. Why it's better than putting it, I guess, in a panel or somewhere enclosed. But um, yeah, it's the ARB twin air compressor. Um, goes pretty good. Pulls hard. <laughs> it's got a little switch. Yeah, that's that there, and that's paired to that battery up the front there. So my house battery just does my fridge, um, a couple of lights, and, and inverter. All my 12 volt. 100 amp hour lithium battery and um, red arc 750 watt inverters on this back of my drawers here and all the wiring the same with the um victron battery monitor and the cell fire goes just mounted in the front there so you can quickly plug it in on the go yeah that's um where all that's hidden away this is kind of like call this the shit area all the bulky gear just gets like chucked under here so things you just don't use all the time like spear fishing gear an extra blanket our hiking shoes camp chairs just bulky stuff really kind of just chuck it in there <laughs> and then up top's a bit neater <laughs> we used to sleep in the back of the car so that's why this um like bed extensions here and um why i took the back seats out i've just kind of left the car and like designed the car around that so I don't mind it, like, it's kind of a good spot just to chuck your bulky stuff. You, you always need a shit zone for camping, I feel like. I will quickly run through the tyres and the um, suspension setup. Starting with the tyres, so they're the Maxi, Ra the Maxi Razors ATs, so they're not the mud terrain one, but they're um, 
they're pretty aggressive for an old terrain tyre and um, I didn't mind the look of them so um, I went with them. They're a 33 by 75 R16 so nothing too crazy it's just a good touring tyre I guess like I didn't want to run 35 so um, I just went with 33s. They go pretty good I haven't really had too much experience with tyres I've only ever had Cooper STT Pros before this and to me they didn't really go that great <laughs> maybe they are a good tyre but um these are fine they're quiet they're pretty good in the um like they're good on the sand they're good in the haven't done much mud driving in them but um gravel roads and like rocky terrain they they go pretty good so so yeah they're the that's the rubber on the old girl these rims here uh, i have changed these over so these are Procom 69 alloy wheels. Um, they're a Neg 25 offset. Um, so that's like the most, that's legal still. So um, and I think they look pretty good. They're a 16 by 10 rim. So I don't know, that they actually look pretty pretty fat when you're looking um, front on, I guess. They're um, got a bit of a stance. They're actually the only ones I could get my hands on. I couldn't get them in a 16x8, so got the 16x10s on there, and I think that, yeah, they go good. They still balloon pretty good. Like, I've had them down to 15 PSI, and they, they balloon great, so I'm pretty stoked with them, and they, it's just like that old school kind of, like, D-hole look, I guess. Okay, suits the car right, brings, brings a bit of a modern pop to the old girl, which I like to say. All right, I'll quickly go through the suspension setup. Just start with the shocks. The, the Superior Engineering Remote Res 2.0s. Um, they've got eight clicks of adjustment. I got these like two years ago, so they might have updated their new ones. I'm not too sure. I usually run eight on the highway, which is like pretty stiff. And then I just kind of play around with the settings depending on the um, terrain I'm in. Sometimes and it's like doing a fair bit of forward driving and it's real slow. I just put them straight down to one and they're really soft and they just it just feels real nice going when you're like just crawling. And then at the moment I've been having them on four and it's kind of like it's not too much body roll but there's still a little bit but still soft enough to like go through the um, bumps I guess or the uh, the coils they're Dobson three inch coils so the Overall lifts, I think it's a three inch lift. Um, might chopped a little bit with the roof tent and stuff like that, but um, it sits pretty good. The Dobson coils, they've been going pretty good. I think they're 150 rated in the front, or I'm not 100% sure. And I think the rear's constant load 350. So yeah, they've been going pretty good. And um, my mechanic, he's drove my car a fair bit and um, he reckons it rides pretty well for like having a rooftop on it like drives pretty well so yeah it goes all right the car sitting at a three inch lift so when you raise a vehicle you actually got to drop all your arms and trailing arms to um, stop the diff from rolling forward so basically when you lift a car all your arms do this and your diff wants to pull forward so you can get different size bushes or I don't know but um, the best way to do it is just to get a set of um, aftermarket arms they are quite costly but if you do it once you don't have to stuff around with it again so to stop that happening you want to like level everything back out so that's why I've gone with the three inch um, superior engineering superflex arms you could just go with the standard arms but you know I thought I was like, oh, get a bit more flex but yeah, so that's what I've done. If you can, you can like see under here where that plate is and these arms here. I've actually cracked this diff housing. Um, this is actually a 105 um, diff housing and I've done all the, the swivel hub rebuild. So the front end's pretty new now, which is great, but that is a common thing, I guess, for the 80 series. Their front ends, like their diffs aren't super strong. Well, I don't think they are, but I guess if you're driving nicely, you shouldn't have a problem, but I drive crap, so <laughs> you do break things. But um, 
that's something to keep in mind. It's got a um, steering dampener, tough dog steering dampener and uh, adjustable pan hard rod too. So you also need to do that if you want to lift the vehicle, when you lift the vehicle over um, two inches. Three inches and above, you got to change a lot of things. So adjustable pan hard and that's just a um, steering dampener. So that's like the front suspension, what we just talked about. And the same thing with the back. If you raise the vehicle, you gotta like lower it too. So I've just got a adjustable trailing arms. Um, they're actually, I think the guy, what did, they're called Comp Shocks. I didn't get the superior ones. I couldn't get them at the time, but they're great. They're, they're super strong and um, they're not gonna bend. So yeah, they're, you probably can't see, but they're in the back there. That's them here. Yeah, so that just stops the oak from pulling forward, I'm pretty sure. So that just like levels it back out, which is, yeah, it makes it ride a lot better. So um, yeah, it's great. Uh, what's new in here? All right, so we put uh, an Apple CarPlay unit. I'm not sure the exact brand, but that's um, relatively new. Got a um, EGT gauge here. That's the only gauge I got at the moment. I did want to get a water temp gauge, but I just didn't get around to it, so probably should get one of them but um, yeah just the EGTs for like driving monitoring it up the beach which is great I like looking at that I don't know if you can see it but this switch here is for my light bar being a Sahara 80 series they come with um, factory lockers which is pretty cool so I've got twin twin locked front and rear so they're my lockers there which is awesome they've been great so I'm um, pretty stoked with that. Also being a Sahara model, it comes with a center console fridge, which is pretty cool. Um, just, just packed up with water bottles at the moment, but um, that's great to have. You can fit like, you can actually fit a lot of cans in there, eh? I think you can fit like, like 12 or more cans in there. And there's a little, there's a little section where you can like freeze little icy poles and stuff, but I don't do that. <laughs> That's that switch I was talking about in here. Um, that pairs those the batteries together in the front, which is great. I've used that heaps. I've got auto locking hub, so that's the center diff lock when I want to engage four drive. A lot of people probably be like, why don't you get um, freewheeling hubs? I just, I haven't broke this yet, so I'm not gonna change it until I break it. I, um, when I did break the car up at Mackay, I was in two-wheel drive and to me, not being in constant high, it did it drove better in um, like two-wheel drive instead of being in constant four-wheel drive. So I probably would change that, but I'm not going to do it until it breaks. So <laughs> yeah, you got to play around with the transfer case. So just going to leave it for now. Got my radio unit. I did have that where my um, the Apple CarPlay was, but. Um, it wouldn't fit in there obviously anymore so it's not the best spot to put it i guess but it's actually like it actually works fine eh like i like it there and i just got my little mount there it's just an old uni den unit um it's only a 40 channel uh it's it does the job i don't really use it a lot to be honest because they're kind of by ourselves but um you can get a lot flashier ones out there like everyone probably knows but um does the job for us. The stereo unit's pretty shit ass. That speaker works. This one doesn't even have a speaker in it, so it's pretty cool, I guess. We got a sunroof. Um, I've got a rooftop tent there now, so um, you can't see anything, but yeah. They see me rolling, they hate I think that's pretty well it for the front. Before everyone asks, I've got 350,000 on the clock, I just tipped over. So I've got a 90 litre main tank and a 45 sub tank. And that's that's the def bar. Yeah, Ronnie holds on to Yeah, my Ronnie holds on to Ronnie probably drives better than me, but let's not go there. We'll move around to the back. Alright, on to the rear setup is kind of where we kind of do a bit of our living out of so um, show what we've got
All right, we'll just run through the rear bar. It's a, it came with the car when I bought it, so I'm pretty sure it's a Rock Armor rear bar. I personally don't really like it, but it's we're not going to change it for this trip. So, what would you like? I'd like I like the look of the Cruiser Company rear bar for this reason. It looks good. The latch system's like so simple. This one's like you gotta like you gotta like double click it so like that clicks once and then you gotta click it twice where the cruiser company one i think you just like it's just a latch and it just opens so twin swingerways um we'll start with this one this one's got two 20 liter jerrys on the back and it's just got our um backyard ghetto water pump set up me and my old man did it it's pretty sick <laughs> It costs us like, the pump cost me 50 bucks and that was it really. Just hose fitting from the back garden. <laughs> I'll quickly show you how it works. I've got a inline 12 volt pump. Um, we've just gone to a little switch and the Anderson plug's just there. A uh, little tap stopper, so if I just flick it on and then you can do that. That's all the water storage we have. We also sometimes get the full like drinking water sometimes. We've been drinking out of that, but sometimes we get like the 10 litre like sacks from Woolies and just put a couple of them in the car. So on the other swing away arm, we just got the spare tire um, and the drifter wheel carrier bag. Um, I love this thing. It's so good. I didn't have a spot to put my Max Tracks. So I used to just store them in the car and it was such a pain getting to them all the time so this bag has like a sleeve for the max tracks which is so awesome um, i've got two in there i think you can fit four maybe just check with um the guys from drifter you can use this as like a rubbish bin and um it's actually got like another pocket to um store a few other things i just keep my shower hose in there um a hammer couple of straps and just my um my tent poles for my awning and there's actually a little shovel in there for like going to the dunny another little cool feature about this bag is you can also fit a little fire pit in here once you start having a fire and stuff like it gets dirty and stuff and you don't really want to put it in the back of the car so that sits on the back here it's got two like sleeves so you can separate like recycling and waste but we just kind of do all one in mine and i think we actually got got wetsuits in the other one at the moment next to the rubbish bin it's all quality canvas yeah it's all australian made so good quality gear and looks all right too i reckon so tick of approval best thing about the land cruiser hey this thing why is it so good it's a seat the seat the chopping board filleting table for your fish it's everything it's everything you want it to be but um i've actually put a piece of um stainless steel on the tailgate here sorry it's not stainless steel it's just three mil alley i think you can a lot of people do stainless steel but that's all i had uh we'll go through the drawer setup now uh these drawers are done by a guy out the back of kilcoy um just does it out of the back of his house. I just hit him up on Facebook and he did it for us. Well, if you're wondering why these are different size, we did have the Evercool drawer fridge here because we used to sleep in the back. I just got him to make another drawer. I think they sit about 350 high, could be a little higher. So they're quite deep drawers and they're just on like Teflon slides, pull them out. So this is where we've got all our clothes. It's just like an easy spot and convenient to get to. So we just got our clothes here, a few towels, and that's it really for this drawer. Yeah. This drawer here is all our cooking equipment. I made a little bracket here just for like little condiments like your olive oil and my knife and um, utensils and stuff like that. Just easy to get to. It's our, all the stuff we cook out of really. We've got a clear top drifter bag in here. 
just to store all our dry food, jet boil, little plunger for coffee. This thing is actually a little 12 volt blender. What do you rate it, Bronny? It's right. You can't make thick smoothies, but you can make smoothies. Yeah. So, an option. I'll probably just start using the inverter now, but um, just a couple of cups and red boards on the side. But that's the drawers, and then um, just up the side here, we got the wings. A lot of people do get the front, which is which is cool. Like you can do like you plug your like a lot of people do the 12 volt like cigarette plugs and stuff like that, but. I kind of like just stuffing a lot of stuff up the side there, so I didn't. I like just to be able to, you can just pop it, pop it off real easy. I've got a hose to fill the jerrys up. I've got a snatch strap up there. This is just like cleaning up gear, you know. Little flap school sink thing. And I just got my air hose for my air compressor, what just all lives under there. So kind of like hoses and just um, washing up gear on that side. Up the side here I just put my fishing rods. I've got three fishing rods here and in this little snazzy fishing thing. And then I just got this bad boy. Haven't used it yet but new drifter axe. Haven't tried her out but she feels pretty good. Can't wait to use that. That just lives up the side. And on this side here we've got another table. I would have liked to have the pull out table here from Drifter, but I got these drawers like two years ago. We've just got the Darchi table, foldable table here. And I just stand it upright, so we've got a bit more room on the side here. Over on this wing here, I just got a, these little gas bottles for the um, cooktop. Uh, I just fit like five or six up the side there. Oh, if you're wondering where all my spare tools are and fluids and all that stuff, if you come around the side here. In the back here, because we had a little bit of room, um, for the, that drawer's cut a little bit short, because of, like I said, about the fridge. So what you can do, you can just have a little box at the back here. And that's got all my tools in there. So that's got like full socket set, spanners um like all your tools um all your fluids like your oil coolant um little brake like brake fluid just all sits in there which is so handy like it's it's out of the way and it's just um awesome like if i had to do a draw self again i'd definitely do that it's just so handy to chuck everything down there and it's tucked away so i just run through what fridge We've got, we've got the Dometic 55 liter, liter fridge freezer. Yeah, it's sitting on a Dun & Watson tilt slide. Um, I didn't want to get a drop down slide just because of the weight. And this is like the only option I thought was the most practical for weight saving and still be able to getting easy access to your fridge. So let me know if you guys think of another way. Um, I wanted two drawers here. A lot of people have it like one foot out here and I didn't want to stack drawers in there because I do like put surfboards and stuff in here. So um, this is the only way I could really think of doing it. So got two latches, pull it out and just drop it down. And in you get. Yeah, uh, it's a 60 litre tilt slide. I think they do a few different sizes, but that's what worked for us. I'll show you guys, like, it's pretty effortless. Comes up and then you just push it back and it locks in. I think they're like 500 bucks. Because this fridge isn't 60 litres, it's only 55. I had a bit of room at the front here. So I just put my cooker, cooker there. So I just undo that and then just put my cooker there. So that's another little cool thing about that. I got this off some other guy. He used like hockey straps to like store his pillows. I was doing that, but now I've got like, we've got how many boards on us? We've got like five surfboards. Most people probably think that's overkill, but I snap a lot of boards. So two boards we like use probably the most um, in here. So I don't always have to go up to the top to access my boards. The boards are on the roof now, sitting on top of the drifter rooftop. I didn't actually think we would use these a lot. They're just these 
um, drifter um, buckets. Like you can use, like put your dirty washing in here or like, um, I don't know, you could even put hot water in here and tip it over your head or something. But just like a collapsible bucket. What? Wet towels or oh, yeah. stuff, not water. Yeah. <laughs> like wet towels or like wet weddies. Oh, wet weddies. Yes, wet wetsuits. I'm so stoked we got these now because we've used it like every day. So, Luke, you're a thinker. And another cool thing, Luke was like just storing behind here. They both fit under here, but this one lives in the car at the moment. They just fit perfectly under there, two of them. So, I reckon they're great for camping. Like, they're just versatile a bucket, so. We also got these solar screens here in the back. I got them more for privacy when we used to sleep in the back, but apparently they like, keep the inside of the car a little bit cooler. So like your fridge. I don't know the installation specs, but everyone I talked to said they're really well, but I don't know how you test that. So, I'm just kind of going with it. Uh, what else was I going to talk about? Oh yeah, I just quickly run through. <laughs> Apparently I just say quickly run through all the time. All right, I quickly go through, the, give you a quick look under the engine bay. Um, I'll just quickly run you through. So camp light wise, it's nothing too fancy really, but um, I just got a little um, amber and LED light at the back here. Nothing too fancy, but works pretty well. Um, this runs back there to my battery and then so you got these things little like I think they're called Hardcore lanterns and then I got their magnet and got a strap, but I just put these anywhere like put them there Light up there and then you know if you one you can go around the side here and you know, just Put a couple there or something just, But see they're actually so bright but, and then they just you can just recharge them so yeah, they're sick. I, I rate them. And they've got like different, they've got amber too, which is cool. There's way better light set ups out there, but that's fine for cooking, eh? Like, how fine? It's very good. Like, it's fine. And if you have any fire and stuff, you want to be around the fire anyway. So. so, how many times have we used this thing? I put the iPad in. <laughs> this is Bronnie's little bookshelf. It's got prime real estate too. Wouldn't say we've used any of these books on our trip yet, so. We've used a chessboard. Uh, we do have a chessboard, which is cool. I like playing chess, so. If anyone wants to play chess online, hit me up. Um, yeah, it's a bookshelf, but. Uh, yeah, I'm not even gonna get into it. We got the ladder for the drift uh, rooftop tent there. Uh, we kind of just put our pillows there. Um, Bronnie's camera bag just like lives there and a couple other bags but that's pretty well it here like there's heaps of room in here now so this is gonna go <laughs> I will run you through the um, out where we sleep and um, the rooftop tent before I get into this I did say that drifters helping us out on this trip but I actually bought the rooftop tent and the awning um, before I met. We got the tea up with Luke and the guys from Drifter, so just letting you guys know if you think, oh, you get free shit. But um, yeah, so. We actually like it. I actually like Drifter gear, so I, I was gonna get one anyway. So this is the Drifter RTT 1.2 model. Um, you can get the 1.4. I thought the 1.2 would be fine for both of us, but I think if you guys were gonna do a big lap, probably go the 1.4. But we've got the 1.2, and the reason why I went with the Drifter rooftop temp is um, it's, actually I would say it's the lightest rooftop tent on the market, what's hard shell. I think it's it. this one comes in around 55 kilos and... Um, 57. 57? I yeah. think so. 57 kilos. It's real streamlined. It's not super bulky and um, 
yeah, that's the one of the main reasons I went with it. A lot of the other um, rooftops on the market are around like 80 plus kilos. So why do you want a light light rooftop? You don't like having weight on the top is like the worst spot you can have it on a four wheel drive. Like the more weight you have, high like you get. This feels not great off road. It's very a um, lot of body roll and it's just just doesn't drive as nice but um, each their own like if you're just doing tour and stuff and you don't want to do too hectic stuff go for a big heavy um, rooftop but um, I wanted something that was light for our trip so I went with um, the Drifter RTT 1.2 and um, yeah I think it's great another thing is it opens up from the side um, which is great for us because we do so being a wagon we do all our cooking and living out the back there it's great that you can just have the option to pop it up from the side and it also comes with it's it's got a little like led light strip in there and you can just um, plug into power and have light in your rooftop also me and Bronny had this kind of sus mattress thing going on in our rooftop a lot of people be like, oh, you can't really get much bedding in there because it's so slim. But the guys at Drifter have come with, the, they've got this new mattress and it, it's like a eggshell mattress, I'm pretty sure. And it like squishes so well for some reason when you like fold the rooftop. So you can actually get like a blanket and like linen sheets and stuff like that. In but it's there. still really comfy. Yeah, but it's still super comfy, so. It's got these, two pockets to put your shoes in. It's got one on this side too, both waterproof. So instead of like leaving them out in the elements, you can just chuck your shoes off. Shoes in. So um, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been great for us. So I did have a roof rack on here, but I took that off and put um, front runner flat bars on them. I think what you should call it. I've just got three. So just to save weight again, so having having like a um, roof rack plus a rooftop tent. These are so light and they, um, yeah, works really well. So we've got the Drifter 270 freestanding awning. Um, yeah, it's great. I think another thing for a freestanding awning, it's only like, I think it's 15 or 16 kilos, which is super light. Like obviously you can't do chin ups and everything off the hinge point but like it's awesome like it's so quick and easy you just wrap it around and it's done i put poles in for it i just personally like doing that like to me a 270 is like a big sale so um i like just putting poles up and like one tie down strap and that stiffens it up and just it's just a bit of peace of mind for me but you can just run it without any poles if you want but I like putting at least one pole down. I've also got a 200 watt solar panel mounted to the rooftop tent. It's got these like little bars that go across. I mounted it to that and it works works fine. So to finish up, I'll ask you a couple of questions. All right. What do you like the most about your car? Starts at the moment. That it starts. <laughs> um, I actually really like this bag. <laughs> Having like somewhere to just put your rubbish and stuff, like just there when you're cooking, like did the dim rubbish bang and the water set up. It's so ghetto, but I just love it. <laughs> yeah, epic. Probably gives me the most joy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and touring at the moment, the rooftop tents been awesome. So I'd probably say also the remote red shockies. I've had them for like two to three years now and they still are bloody pretty good. Yeah. Like it's pretty comfy driving, so um, nice. probably those three, I guess. And what about one thing you wish you didn't get on your car? One thing I wish I didn't get. Probably just the age of the vehicle. Like it's like almost 30 years old now, so it's just got a lot of like wear and tear on it being an older car like um, that's probably I shouldn't say a regret 
boring. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just, it's just old. Uh, so there's just a lot of things that if you do buy an old car, like you're going to be replacing things. So. All right, and last question. Yeah. What's something you want to do in the future to your car? Um. <laughs> um, oh, I'd love to do a few different things to it. I'd like to swap the engine, I'd like to chop it in half. But um, to be practical, I would probably wouldn't mind trying to get like a built in um, table in the drawer system. That would be pretty cool. And also, um, changing where all the 12 volt is. I'd like to have like a gull wing and like 12 volt set up there. That I think that'd be really handy. Like just pop that and like plug all your camera gear and stuff in like that. Um, you plenty to look forward to. Yeah. All right, so that's it for the walk around of our Land Cruiser. Um, yeah, that's how we've set the car up. Each to their own. People will probably like a few things and go, that's stupid, but all cars have their like pros and cons, I guess. So um, we're just working with what we've got and um, we don't really need the glamour. So we, how it's set up is pretty, we're pretty stoked with it. So um, yeah, thanks for watching. And might, if you see us on the road, don't be shy to say hello. So yeah. Yeah! <laughs>